Okay, out of Smack Stress here, this time with the KK7's wand style magnetic induction heater. So these are sold, and this is a promotional product. I appreciate them sending it to me. These more budget brand, Chinese brands, have been really kind of pushing these in the last couple, three years. And they're around $175. So I've been kind of waiting until I received, basically received an offer so I could try one of these. They're not going to replace everything that a gas, particularly a high quality map gas, rosebud torch, or the precision torch I reviewed a little bit ago, just because you can get a flame in a pretty compact and tight spaces, awkward places that you can't get these coils. But these things offer a lot of safety. It's not an open flame. They do actually work pretty well, but once again, I kind of wanted to wait till I to really test one out because I'm not fond of having to deal with order stu ordering stuff, being disappointed and returning it. Um, why not get a promo product? And actually, I've tested this a little bit, and it actually seems to work, work as expected. So I think a lot of the negative reviews, one, there may be with at least some other brands because there's several brands of this style. Um, you know, whenever you order stuff like this, just give it a good run through in the first week or two that you have it. That way, if there's issues, at least they'll crop up within uh, a return window. After that, after it's, you know, worked for the initial period, then these types of products actually tend to be pretty reliable after that. If there's a problem, it's going to have to be immediate or real soon. So they do give you several wires. This is a 2.5 millimeter or 14 gauge wire with just a like a Nomex or a fiberglass fireproofing on it, which is also what provides insulation because you do need the coil. What these are is just a high frequency switching power supply. And what it's doing is it's turning these little coils essentially into one side of a transformer. The other side of the transformer is what you're ever whatever you're heating up. And like transformers, these things work much better the tighter the fit that you have or the closer that the coil can be to the magnetic objects just like an induction cooktop it does have to be a magnetic steel these will work on magnetic forms of stainless steels yes you can induction heat things that are non-magnetic brasses coppers aluminums but you need an overwhelming amount of power where if the material that you're trying to inductively heat is magnetic um, then you get a resonance going and it heats up much more effectively. So that's why these are rated for uh, ferrous metals. And like transformers, the less of the air gap, the closer the magnetic field is, the more energy that you'll deliver. This little coil is a little bit hard to deal with um, because it's hard to keep it from not touching. That's what causes the insulation burn. Versus a coil that has a whole big clearance. This is That big air gap means that there's a big space... Uh, reduction in the magnetic field and you'll have a lot less effect of it. Obviously the way these things are set up they just can't get into all the kind of tight spaces all the places that you use a torch to heat up stuff obviously you're not going to use this to do silver brazing like you can with the torch but there's just the situations where uh, it is appropriate where you do have access where it's a little bit safer maybe you're in I can actually see these being used on the farm more rusted nuts and bolts and places like that where you may be around dry materials in the summer and it just dramatically reduces the hazard so anyway what you get is you get quite a few coils i'll at least give them that credit you get four different sizes and you get a pair of each size plus these are what they're calling custom bend your own coils well it's a loop right now it's not a coil technically you can use loops through pieces of uh sections of piping but i don't know how effective this one is but it is nice that they include that. Also, the last thing I was meaning to mention here was if you just have the one edge of the coil sticking over the object, it's not going to be able to transfer well. So not only is it the air gap this way, but you also really want to try to get the coil to surround whatever object as good as possible. There's also a slight issue where if you have like a nut that's in a recessed area, then some of the energy will be drawn off to like, you know, if it's a steel bowl holding down an iron flange or something like that, a bra suspension bracket, some of the energy will be drawn off because it'll be it'll be close on the outside edge. It won't. It'll still deliver most of the energy to the inside, but still be kind of siphoned off. 
And so there's those are the considerations with one of these, and also I suspect explains why there's a lot of complaints about them, is maybe having more fundamental, under just a little bit of fundamental understanding of transformers and how they work, because that's essentially what this is. So that's what this is. Now, a lot of these have this 1300 watt rating, and, uh, well, actually, this doesn't say watt, but it's, there's either two different versions, ones that are around 750 watts and ones that are around 1300 watts, or it's just kind of a fundamental uh, translation error, wherever most of the world is 200 or 220 volts. This is rated at 6.5 amps, so they'll say, whoever designed the graphics says, oh, it's 6.5 amps. Most of the world is 220, so it must be 1300 watts. We're in North America when we're at 120 volts. This is actually going to output around one horsepower hour, power or one uh, 750 watts. The wand is pretty bulky by itself, but what we have is just distance from the heat. I suspect some, you know, control electronics, and then we have the big power heat sinks, which are handling the switching, and then there's a fan that's blowing through the heat sinks, and the wire itself directly connects to those. We have a LED light, which is kind of nice, that turns on when the unit is active. Okay, so on a object that doesn't have much mass, like the ring of this uh, box wrench, it will heat up surprisingly quickly. And if you try to keep the coil, your, the idea is to keep it centered. It's not a lock-on switch, it's just a button that you press and you hold. And it shouldn't take too long here to get this thing. Yeah. As you can see, I mean, they're not fake. They do work. You just have to take into consideration, you know, it's pulling about 350 watts, 330 watts here. So if you want to heat up a whole area then, then you just got to kind of be careful. Maybe run it back and forth a little bit. And that is a red hot. And we can see here, well, I'm too zoomed in, that that coil was also starting to get real hot by itself. And so uh, they are definitely intermittent. And due to their nature, they'll just continue to build up enough heat where you'll burn off even this, whatever it is, 2,000 degree rated uh, insulation. And so when you're done doing that, the idea is you just set it down and let the fan cool the coil a little bit. I have a little place to set this wrench. I'll tell you what, that is one hot wrench. And getting it that red hot, I may have already ruined the uh, temper or the hardening on that wrench. Although I can say I gave the end of it kind of a nice bluing there, a nice color. Since it is a coil, at least it doesn't take very long to uh, cool back down. We're going to use the same coil size. The smallest one is just going to be a little bit too difficult. This piece of steel here is going to have five times a lot more mass, and that's something else to consider. If you have the, you know, a big nut on a big bolt bolted to, you know, an aluminum flange on a transmission housing or something like that, that aluminum flange is going to act like a heat sink, plus the mass of the bolt. Um, and there are like much higher end ver professional versions of these that are five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars from you know, bigger names uh, that do offer a lot more power, but they're expensive. And so that's kind of the niche about these Chinese ones, like this KK7s, is that for less than 200 bucks, you can kind of get a new unit that will offer some of the utility of one of these at a much more reasonable price. It's pulling 632 watts here. I have much more higher cross-section of steel so it's able to couple more energy to it. And we can already see the smoke coming off of this. It's already bluing. This one's actually working pretty well. Trying to avoid touching it because all this caused more burning to the insulation. Whatever oil was in there is now all burned out. And I 
I don't know if you can see it, it was just at the point of glowing right then. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more heat. There, now it's obviously glowing. And so that's the other thing, you just gotta try to keep the coil as close as possible. They only last so long, particularly when you have larger cross sections that you gotta put a lot of energy into. I was just trying it again. So when the coil, these are gold, and when they get real close to the coil failing, it actually turns white, which is kind of, which is interesting. On the last part of this, I decided I will try it on brass. And brass has a little bit lower resistance. I guess also the resistance of the material. But just about anything that's conductive can be induction heated. It's just magnetic materials are optimal. So I got that about 85 degrees. And I'm just going to hold this on for a few seconds here. Don't want to overheat this nice brass water nozzle. I only give it about 15 seconds. So a piece of steel would have heated heat it up pretty darn quickly. This, as we can see, it's over 200 degrees. So in that short amount of time, I mean, it is inductively heating this non-magnetic material. So that is kind of nice that you can use it on other materials. You'll just have widely varying levels of performance. So the fact that it works on brass, this is a, I broke the, plastic packaging off of it but I'm curious if this is a effective way to erase USB sticks there's got to be enough material to I just want to see if I can't get it hot enough to I mean I just wonder if it has any effect on it at all it's delivering some energy I can tell that Well, it doesn't work anymore, and uh, the chip indeed was starting to heat up. Anyway, I just thought one of these would be cool to kind of mess with, big to... So anyway, that's my review. I mean, as far as I can tell, this thing is... I mean, it certainly does work, and does heat up pieces of steel. You just got to keep the coils pretty tight around the object and make sure that... It isn't just one coil but as many as possible but there's lots of things I'm going to end up experimenting with I have this special wire that also has that similar type of extremely high temperature insulation so uh, that may be an option I'm going to experiment with is actually using special stranded wire where you can actually custom wrap the wire around the object and then connect it to the device that may be handy in certain situations or just having a flexible wire in general Maybe even certain types of soldering or uh, other kind of joining applications. It's just kind of the experiment to learn about one of these things. And although I didn't test one of the big coils across a really large piece of steel, and you know it may deliver another couple hundred watts in that scenario, uh, I just think the number on these is just uh, due to confusion, basically. Confusion loss and translation where they're multiplying the six and a half amps by 220 volts instead of the 110 volt. So anyway, I think it's kind of interesting. I know uh, I could certainly see, you know, knife makers and stuff could certainly have a use for this because it's simple and easy, at least on smaller blades, to heat them up. Being able to custom shape a coil, maybe be able to heat up just uh, the edge uh, could certainly be used. I think it's certainly handy, and for the price of it, it's a really a pretty good price to get into one of these units and just see how well it's going to end up working out for you. It certainly is convenient, won't replace gas in a variety of situations, but it does, you know, at least this unit does work as advertised, and the nice thing about these is that it concentrates the heat in a much more precise area with, of course, a flame, the flame's hitting the object and bouncing off and really just heating up a whole bunch of stuff 
where many times uh, you can get away with one of these and just be able to more pre pre precisely apply it and in certain safety situations. Speaking of safety, one of the criticisms it should have had a stronger switch here or maybe something more like an angle grinder where you have a slide switch that you have to push forward. Because I did set this down and it did end up sitting right on the switch and it has enough weight to press its own button or the button should have been in a deeper recess. So that's one thing to consider. But using 14 gauge or two and a half millimeter wire, you can you know order this high temperature insulation and make your own solid wire uh, replacement coils. And of course, they offer replacements themselves. Anyway, really appreciate you watching. Appreciate KK7 sending this to me. It will be an interesting unit to play around with. And I suspect probably this will be most used oh, in suspension bolts and shocks and that type of stuff, as well as various machinery and equipment. I mean, a lot of places where you think about heating up a bolt, and this is just more convenient to pull out and use. In a halfway decent case. Anyway, see you next time.